everyone, today's video is a wrap up of the books that I read in February. So for starters I read The End We Start From by Megan Hunter. Now this is an advanced proof copy, this is coming out on the 18th of May in the UK. This is a novel about the end of the world, at least there's been an environmental catastrophe and there is a, a mother, she gives birth at the beginning of the novel and it's about her and her partner trying to survive in this new apocalyptic world whilst also adapting to new parenthood. The interesting thing about this book is that it's sort of written like a prose poem from the start. It's it's like this. So the very short snippets, short paragraphs, she only gives you the information that you absolutely need. So it's, it's very minimal in its writing style. In addition to that, the characters aren't named, they don't have full names, they are just given first initials. So you've got R, you've got S, you've got J. So I, I liked this, it was a very quick read. I liked what it was what it was doing, I didn't feel super super invested but at the same time I did care about these characters. I think it was just the right length, if it had been longer than this I probably wouldn't have continued with it but I thought it was a really novel concept. Um, the, the way of writing and with the style of it and it it sort of it reminded me a little bit of something like Station Eleven by Emily St John Mandel but it's more like a poem version of Station Eleven. So yeah I think this is this is an interesting book and definitely be worth checking out when it comes out in May. So the next thing I finished was Noughts and Crosses by Mallory Blackman which I probably should have read a very long time ago. I listened to the audiobook. I think I'm going to be thinking about this book for a long time. It's set in a world where you've got noughts and crosses and it essentially it is post-slavery America except it's the the black people who are the, the crosses they are in charge and the white people are called noughts and they're the ones who have just been recently emancipated from slavery. The novel t starts out with two best friends, um, one is a nought and one is a cross and the nought boy is starting off at this new school and it's just at the beginning of this integration or attempts at integration where the noughts are being admitted to cross schools as a, a new initiative and oh it all goes downhill from there. It was exceptionally good, cleverly done and it it made me just want to keep reading and reading and I will read the others. The ending though, if you've read it you know what I mean. <sighs> okay so for something completely different, um, this is a record of, or record of a night too brief by Hiromi Kawakami. She wrote Strange Weather in Tokyo which I read last year, possibly the year before. I quite liked it, I thought I'd give this a go. This is short stories. Well, it's it's three short stories. Three stories that are linked by how weird they are, I guess. This was absolutely perplexing. <laughs> so imagine Alice in Wonderland in three short stories, except on steroids. And I mean, Alice in Wonderland is kind of on LSD or something. Anyway, it's bananas. This is just, this is just so much more. Um, I, I finished reading it and felt quite perplexed. Uh, I don't think it's meant to make sense as such. It's just this kind of strange dream sequence and uh, particularly the first one um, which is Record of a Night Too Brief. It's about this woman who goes through all sorts of very very strange experiences and meets all sorts of very bizarre characters as as she goes she she meets this other other woman who shrinks and shrinks and shrinks and in that sense it sort of reminded me of some of the stranger moments in Murakami and I, I think this is something that you find in Japanese literature quite a bit these these very bizarre kind of out of body type experiences. I'm still not quite sure what to make of this I enjoyed parts of it. I don't know if enjoyed is quite the word. It's strange. If you've read this, let me know. We can discuss it in the comments. Then we have this teeny, teeny, tiny little essay, which is so, so cute. It's called The Clothing of Books by Jhumpa Lahiri. And it's an essay. 
about book covers and particularly about her perspective on her own book covers which I thought was really interesting I like that aspect of it a lot of the rest of the stuff was definitely not new to me as someone who designs book covers um, but I think that it's, it's quite an interesting way to get thinking about the way that we look at book covers, the way that we interact with books. The most interesting part for me was definitely her perspective on the different book covers that she's had over the years. So the same book, but different covers for different markets, uh, for different translations. That, that was really, really interesting. I did, however, wish that she had actually said which book covers she liked and didn't like because she was very vague about it. I can see why, but it was really, really irritating. It makes me want to go through all of her all of her covers on, on Goodreads and try and figure out the ones that she really doesn't like, doesn't think represents her books. Would definitely recommend picking this up if you happen to spy it in a bookshop. This next one is possibly everything I've ever wanted in a book. It's The Secret Loves of Geek Girls. And this is an anthology of graphic novel short stories and short stories so graphic short stories they are all autobiographical and are about these different women's experience of falling in love whether that be with people with fictional characters with literature um with with video games with comics it's it's just it's geeky and it's so so varied it's got all these different comic book styles in here and and writing styles it's got a little short story thing from uh Meigs Fitzgerald who wrote Long Red Hair which is a book that I read last year and absolutely loved um it's got a little comic thing at the beginning from Margaret Atwood and these are also her drawings this is also one of the most inclusive collections that I've come across as it it includes women of different races different backgrounds so much of the LGBT spectrum is represented in here you've got trans women you have got bisexual and gay women it discusses asexuality demisexuality it's just absolutely wonderful so if you can get your hands on a copy of this i highly highly recommend it this next one is by a turkish author and this is a rediscovered classic um it, it's recently been reprinted by penguin it is madonna in a fur coat and it's by sabatin ali and this is book that kind of reminded me of Christopher Isherwood a little bit. Um, it is about a young Turkish man who goes to Berlin and falls in love with an artist. This is the 1920s so all the the 20s vibe going on and we know from the beginning that this is a doomed relationship. It's not going to go well. The story itself is framed um, it, it's diary entry and it's framed with somebody discovering this diary. The author of the diary is very unwell and we know that he's had some sort of tragic backstory and so the diary is is that backstory and th this romance. And so the diary entry, the story of this doomed romance, gives context for this man's life as a whole and it gives context for the man who's reading it who's his friend. I really liked the writing or translation and I, I liked the, the setting and it's it's a book that has a great em emotional impact so another one that I would recommend. This one's another proof copy and this book is coming out here in April so that's in the UK it's coming out in April I believe but it has already been released in the US and possibly in other places as well. This is by Kanishk and it is called Swimmer Among the Stars. Uh, I believe that the actual cover is going to look like that. This is kind of magical realism. There are, are a range of different of different stories in this. Some of them I really really liked and others I really wasn't bothered with at all. The one that really stood out to me is the title story Swimmer Among the Stars and it is about this this speaker of a language. The language is about to die out because she is the last speaker of this language. She is speaking to a whole lot of linguists 
about her language. And so she is being recorded saying a whole lot of different things. So there is at least some record of of this language. And the bit that, that most stood out to me was the, the bit where the, the actual title comes in and she's trying to translate the word astronaut and the, there's no word for, for astronaut in her language. So she translates it as swimmer among the stars, which I just thought was absolutely beautiful. And she talks about how if you, if you translated something to swimmer among the stars and then translated it back, you would get a very different reading again. Yeah, that was by far my, my favourite story. Um, some of the other ones towards the end that I didn't especially care for, but I think this is definitely worth picking up because there are some real gems in here. And like I said, that's out on the 6th of April in the UK. I feel like I've had a really, really great reading month so far. In fact, a really great reading year. There have been very few things that I haven't enjoyed in there. And the next one is no exception. It is The Three Daughters of Eve by Elif Shafek, and this was just absolutely fantastic. I think I'm going to give it five stars. I, I like to let books sit a little while, and for me to reflect on them before, I definitely give them a, a definitive rating. But this just had aspects of so many different things that I love. It's another dual narrative. We start off with Peri, the, this Turkish woman. She's a Turkish housewife in the present day. She gets mugged in an alley that's that's what kicks off this series of memories and so we then we go back to her time in Oxford which is where she studied as an undergraduate and we learn from fairly early on that there was some sort of scandal to do with one of her professors and it's assumed that she had something to do with it and we find out across the course of the novel the extent to which she was involved in this scandal and how it changed her life and how it changed some of the other players in this, this story. So I loved all the bits which were set at Oxford. This is what I really wanted from a, a university novel and this is what I most love about university novels is those kinds of discussions that you have sometimes in tutorials, sometimes just really late at night when you're just sitting in your dorm room and drinking wine and talking about the, the meaning of, of the universe, which is kind of what I imagined university would be like, um, because I read too many university novels before I actually went to university and discovered that it wasn't really like that at all. But it had that feeling, and especially in the tutorials that she has with this professor who is the professor in The Scandal. He's very charismatic and very open-minded, I would say. He's very good at opening the minds of his students and he, he sort of plays games with them a bit as well. I won't go into it too much because it'll it'll spoil it but we find out as well throughout the course of the novel how she ended up as a housewife when that was sort of everything that she despised when she was younger. This book had a great pacing, it was well written, it had really engaging characters and I didn't, I didn't want it to end the sign of a really, really good book. So the next audiobook was Dante and Aristotle Discover the Secrets of the Universe, which I should have read a long time ago. I realise this now. It was beautiful. It was so beautiful. Oh. It's another audiobook that is narrated by Lynn manuel Miranda. I listened to The Brief and Wondrous Life of Oscar Wilde the previous month, um, which was also narrated by him. So... I just want every audiobook to be narrated by him now. Just great. This is a coming of age story that I don't feel like you have to be a teenager to appreciate it. Unlike something like Catcher in the Rye, where if I read that now, I would be just really angry with it, I think, and annoyed at Holden. But when I read it, it was just at the right time. Whereas this one has a more kind of universal feel to it. Um, it's, it's very life affirming, has a a lot of really important ideas about identity, uh, about sexuality, and also about masculinity. It's about two boys who both have unusual names and kind of bond over the fact that they have unusual names. One teaches the other to swim, and so the first part is set during this summer. They develop a really special friendship, um, which is quite unusual in that both of them are sort of social outcasts and they, they don't have a lot of friends or any friends outside of this. Quite a lot of musing over the meaning of life and um, 
the sorts of things that you discuss when when you're a teenager when you're that kind of teenager anyway you probably don't need me to tell you how great this book is because I feel like I'm, I'm the last person on the planet to read it but it's great it's really great then there's the one that I finished last night which is Notes on a Scandal by Zoe Heller. It's another book I'm quite glad that it wasn't any longer than it was so certainly not going on my, my five star list but I did enjoy it. I don't feel like this is the sort of book that's going to stick with me long term um, but it's about a teacher who has a, an affair with one of her students and it's written from the perspective of another teacher, an older teacher, who is kind of fascinated a bit obsessed with this younger teacher it took me a little while to get into it I was beginning to wonder am I better off just watching the film um it's a terrible thing to say but yeah I, I enjoyed it but wasn't overwhelmed by it but that might have been because I had just finished two really fantastic books previous to this I find it's quite difficult to tell how objectively good you find a book when you've just read other books which were really really great it all becomes sort of relative to the things that you've read around a certain book so those are the books that i've read in february up until the 14th i will do another wrap up sometime in march with the rest of the books that i've read let me know if you have read any of these if you agree or disagree and as always thank you very much for watching and i will see you next time bye